Um, hi, guys. Thank you. Um, so in the last year, I think there's been a movement across the world, you know, here with the moves to change 18C um, and the rise of the One Nation Party and overseas with Trumpism and Marie Le Pen in, in France, that we're moving to a place where it's OK to openly not be tolerant. It's OK to openly um, voice your views on other races, gender, the whole thing. What's your view on the one thing we can do in the workplace to arrest that, to, to switch it back? Because from my position, I think there's, um, a, there's a strong voice on the other side, but people are shouting louder on the other side. So in the States, you've had the women's protests today, you've got the women's strike. What's the one thing we can do in the workplace to, to shift that? For me, it's really about celebrating what's working. I think uh, the voices of the voice of the minority, but unfortunately, the majority, we're not actually going out there and telling the success stories. And I think that's something we need to do because uh, I think um, at the present moment, the media, the way the media runs it as, as well, it seems to put a lot of focus on uh, a comment that's likely to get. Uh, good ratings, but from my, from my own personal experiences, there is a lot of success stories that people can get up there and tell a story and saying, hey, this is a contribution that this person has made because they've come from a Chinese background, a Turkish background, a Greek background, and this is the value that's created. And I think, you know, in Melbourne, um, you know, we have, a, uh, we have a community that really focuses a lot around uh, multiculturalism. And I think I'm seeing that uh, also in Melbourne. But we need to continue to celebrate the benefits of cultural diversity rather than, um, you know, let some of these uh, minority groups really, you know, shout much louder than we, we do. Yeah. And there's something, isn't that, around the, the shouting louder? And Because that was part of Shirley's question around it, there's a minority but they've got a big voice. Or we believe they're the minority or we hope they're the minority somewhere in that realm. It is a question of leadership. Oh, sorry, it's the, the, the sort of public platform for debate is a very dangerous one for sane people. Uh, but within an organisation, within an organisation, there's nothing stopping a CEO or a leader saying, if I see any of that crap in here, you're gone. Mm. And it's as simple as that. We don't tell that is crap that's going on out there on a playing field that doesn't represent the real world anyway, and we're not going to have that in here. And anyone who is playing that game in here is a goner. I'll come and get you. I, <laughs> I mean, seriously, I, I just don't... I think. That, so I think that see I can, I can see many CEOs and directors saying that in their organisations. It's it's one of those things where in the public domain, it's there's less people willing to stand up and get involved with, quite frankly, people who are loony. Yep. You know, it's t it's tough. Yep. I, I you're absolutely right. We're seeing a normalisation of xenophobia. It is absolutely normal. Um, once upon a time, it's something that, um, you know, you wouldn't dare say to someone's face or, or even online. Um, what we are seeing um, is a trend where you've got everyday mums and dads, everyday garden variety Australians of all different backgrounds that feel comfortable enough to come and send you hate mail using, and, and I have, uh, you know, uh, experienced this, um, you know, people sending you the most horrific things through their Facebook profile and they're, they're you know, their avatar is mum and dad and kids. So they're real names, real photos, and they're comfortable to sort of do that. Um, so we are absolutely seeing that trend globally and particularly in Australia. I think corporate Australia has an enormous role to play in this. Um, if Just because something doesn't necessarily impact your workforce per se, and I would argue that it actually does, um, but if there is no direct impact, it doesn't mean that you can't show leadership in that area. Um, whether it's publicly coming out and, and saying that something is wrong, um, you know, calling out the elephant in the room or um, privately using the influence that they have um, in their positions to actually influence um, politicians, influence the, the, you know, movers and shakers of the industry um, to actually see some change. Um, we really need to see more of that because the levels of xenophobia that we're seeing right now is unprecedented. It has, you know, it, and I kind of think, gosh, how much worse could it get? And it does, like, it just gets worse. Um, so I think everybody plays a role and it's about examining the levels of privilege that we have individually and then using those levels of privilege to help those who are less privileged. If I can just add another comment in regard to Steve's comments. You know, in my organisation, every time I go to a CEO conference, which is held every six months, 
My CEO says the same comment every one of those conferences. He said, if there's any leader in this room that is not an inclusive leader, there's no place for you in this organisation. And he calls it out very, very loudly. And I think, for me, that's the sort of leadership that's required from the top down. On an, and that needs to be cascaded right down to, to, the, to the bottom levels of leadership. But that's how you'll get real change over a period of time.